guys, we're gonna to talk today about cleaning a carbonized boiler. So in this case, it's an oil, you guys can see, oil, steam boiler. It's a New Yorker, you guys can see right there. And you guys can see the model right here, which is a CLS4. Guys, listen, it's very important. People don't realize how important it is to clean your boiler. So not only do you have to clean your boiler, but you also have to clean your chimney. The chimney coming just left, they take care of the chimney. Um, it's already in good condition, you can see it. But they clean the stack, meaning the, from the chimney base all the way to the top. So today, we're gonna take the necessary steps and we're gonna show you in this video how to clean a carbonized boiler. All right guys, step number one, safety. Always make sure the boiler is off. I shut it off prior for us starting the cleaning. I took off the hood, so I want to just identify the parts so you guys know what I'm talking about. So just to show you guys, this is called a heat exchanger. This right here has to be cleaned out. So the heat exchanger is here. Once I start brushing it down, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. In addition to cleaning out the heat exchanger, you also gotta clean out the side of the boiler. Not all boilers have clean outs. In this particular case, this boiler has three clean outs, which you guys gotta see, which is right here. You guys can see it, so it's three. So you have to clean out the heat exchanger from the top and from the sides. All right, guys, we're about to get started. So first things first, always wear a mask. In this case, I'm not wearing a mask. I know I'm supposed to, but the reason for it is for the video so I can show you guys. Um, I try to um, wear a mask at all times. Of course, it's a little pain in the ass something when you're breathing, but you should be wearing a mask and goggles. In this case, I'm just doing it. Again, it's just because I want to show you guys in the video. It's a little hard to understand me when I have a mask in my mouth or my front of my face and you cannot hear me. So first things first is the mask, goggles, if you have any mask and goggles. Second thing is you want a taper brush, look something like this. And it's tapered. You notice that on this side is fatter, at the end is a little thinner. So the reason for that is easy to go in, the creases. So, and when you clean this heat exchanger, I'm gonna show you, you never go straight down. You clean it in an angle. So you're gonna go this way and you're gonna go the other way. The other thing is I have you have to have a soot vac. You have a soot vacuum right here. If you want, I will put it on the on the link below where you can get it. A company called Sid Harvey's. They're a very big HVAC distributor. They do a lot of oil stuff here and especially in the New York area. But if you want a, a, a vacuum, make sure it's a soot vacuum because you if you use a regular vacuum, like a shop vac, or you're gonna use a regular vacuum like a home, you will ruin your vacuum. All right, guys, as you guys can see, we took off the heavy debris. Look at the difference just taking out the heavy debris. I mean, it's a big difference just taking out the big stuff on top. Of course, now we have to clean, like I said, on an angle. And you guys can see here, notice here, it doesn't go straight down. It goes on an angle. So now the next step is to actually brush down the heat exchanger, clean it. Clean it. So it looks something like this. Let me show you guys, again, it's a little difficult, but you can see what I mean in an angle. And you go push it in push out, well pull out I should say. And the same thing, pull the way in and pull out. Hit the ringer, hit the bell, the bell button, subscribe, and any new videos coming up, you'll get the fucking video guys, and you could be the next Louis the Boiler Man. Woo wee! All right guys, we're about to start cleaning this side of the boiler. You know, it's a different position, I was there. Now I'm on the other side, here we go. All right, guys, look at that beauty. I mean, look at the difference. Did, you saw the before, now you see the after. I mean, it's nice and clean. Passageways is, is clean and it's clear. So now the actual exhaust will go through the heat exchanger into the chimney. So guys, this is what it's, a border cleaning is supposed to look like. Now we're about to start cleaning the sides. So this guy's some side clean outs, you guys can see right there. I mean, look at, look at the difference. I mean, the little bit that we clean. Now, this particular um, uh, side of the heat exchanger, you can clean, you go directly in. You don't have to go on an angle. And look how much shit came out from the bottom. See what I mean, guys? Listen, if you don't, imagine if you just clean the top and don't clean the sides. Look what you have left over. If I didn't clean the side. And this is just clean the top. Some of the debris came from the side. So now we're about to clean the side cleanouts. All right, guys. And this is how we do it, baby. Woo! All right, guys, so now you take this brush, put it directly in, very simple. 
if you notice, and it's a little hard to see with the camera, but same thing, one section at a time. But the difference is you could go straight in. So if you look in here closely, in and out. Very simple. You know guys, you guys know what I mean. In and out. In and out. In out. In out. All right, guys. We just finished doing the cleanouts on the side of the boiler. Look at the difference. Wow. And look how much soot. Aside from cleaning the top, look what's on the floor. So guys, it's just an important and very important and just don't be fucking lazy. Clean the top and clean the sides. A lot of guys clean the top and don't even clean the sides. There are three clean out doors and this is what you see inside. Now, now that it's very clean, I mean, you can see right through. Big difference. All right, guys. This is called a smoke hood. This smoke hood goes on top of the boiler. You guys can see there. So make sure this is clean because if you notice look how dirty it is. So you want to clean along the walls and clean the top. You don't want no sediment inside here. So we're going to clean this and you're going to see the before and after. So make sure when you take off the smoke hood, as soon as you're done cleaning the boiler, clean the smoke hood, guys. It's very important. All right, guys, take a look. The smoke hood has been officially cleaned. Notice there's no buildup on the walls where the flue pipe goes in. And look at the difference. Wow. So you can just imagine how much soot was inside this boiler. Had about an inch and a half of soot along the walls and as well as on the smoke hood. So big difference. Okay, now that you have the gaskets set in place, I'm gonna put the hook smoke hood right on top, just like this. You notice that this rope is supposed to be on this along the seam of the smoke hood. So that's to ensure that all the gases stays inside the smoke hood or inside the boiler, I should say, all right? And make sure all these gases, they go out through the flue pipe and through the chimney. All right, guys, we're about to clean out the clean out doors. And once they're clean, we're gonna install them back in place. We have three of them. You wanna clean these up too. I mean, it's not a lot, but you know, soot goes everywhere. So you wanna make sure this soot is removed, keep it nice and clean. And also you wanna make sure this is clean so it creates a nice tight seal. So again, to prevent any gases or soot or any type of particles or debris to come out the boiler. So very important. And again, when you tighten this over here on the top, there's the screws, as you guys can see on the top, there's three of them. Don't over tighten them because you could break them or strip them. All right, guys, we just finished cleaning the top of the boiler, the side, which is the clean out. So that's how I showed you in the video. Now we're about to drop the front wall. Typically, you don't have to do this, but since this is carbonized, we have to get in there. I mean, this is crammed up with soot. Think about it. If you clean from the top, what do you think is going to happen? All the soot is going to go to the bottom in the chamber. So you guys, I know it's a lot more work than you want to do, but you want to clean it the right way and you want to thoroughly clean it. Especially if you're doing this for a customer, this is the right way to clean it. So this particular front wall has one, two, three, four, and there's one on the bottom of the burner, five. So five bolts and typically about half inch. So get yourself a nice half inch nut driver or a half inch um, open end wrench. Take it apart. I always leave the last one on the bottom to hold the weight of the actual front wall. Okay, it's a little heavy, be careful guys. And of course, you wanna make sure you don't kink the oil line because you will have issues, but we got plenty of slack and space. So we're gonna remove the bolts and we're gonna, um, once we remove the bolts, we're gonna remove the front wall. All right guys, this is called the front wall. So when you take off this, well, the front wall insulation is the front wall plate. So the, the metal or iron, whatever you wanna call it, a steel plate, as we call it, the front plate or steel plate is in the front. It's called the front wall. It's an insulation. Be careful you don't break it. Take it off very carefully. This is what protects the burner from overheating and melting and getting burned. So guys, when you take this off, be very, very careful. You don't want it to break. All right, let's take a look what's going on in here. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Think of it if you didn't clean that. And there's a lot of guys out there in the industry, unfortunately, they don't do the right thing. And look how much shit is inside all the debris from inside the heat exchanger. So yes, we gotta open this up and clean it and clean it thoroughly. All 
All right, guys, this is what your front wall looks like. Look how much soot is on that front wall. We gotta clean that. So that is your front wall. You can see it now that we uh, removed the, the plate, the front plate, and we're gonna get in there. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not, but you gotta get in there to clean the chamber. Otherwise, you're gonna have all this soot in there. We do not want that, all right? All right, mi gente, we just finished cleaning out the chamber. What a difference. I mean, look at this. We clean it. Again, you're never gonna have it 100, 100% clean the way you think, like as far as cleaning a window or anything. It's just a little different. You know, soot. If you wanna get it really, really clean and more intense, you will have to use a, um, a pressure washer. But this is what it looks like. This is called the wet blanket. It protects the bottom of the boiler. You gotta be very careful. I took this first. I took all the debris first from the top, then I took it out, then I cleaned everything out. Take a look. I mean, big difference, guys. Big difference. This is the way you wanna clean the boiler. I will tell you this. It's a very dirty, intensive labor job. So this is the reason why. Guys, if you own a home and you need to get cleaning done to your boiler, and somebody's telling you how much it is and it's as high, because this is the stuff that we have to deal with. And not only, not only that, the stuff that we're breathing in could cause cancer. It's hazardous material, so the type of job it is, that's the reason why it's very expensive. Clean our plates back together on the side of the boiler. Just to give you a little FYI, these things have a little slot on top of the cast. It comes off and it slides. If you notice, on this bolt is a square part on the head. It goes right here in this little notch. And that's what holds it in place for moving. And you have one, the same thing on the bottom. You guys can see. When I'm telling you this is because sometimes guys just put the plates back on not realizing how you're supposed to back, you put them back on. They could be a little tricky. And of course, especially the ones on the bottom because it has happened to me by accident. I pushed it all the way in and it fell in the chamber. And you, and you do not want to take this whole front plate again after you just finished cleaning it. So guys, just be very careful. And again, bolt on the top, bolt on the bottom, screw it on. Just do one at a time. Be very careful. Like I said, they're very tricky. I already got the first one on. Just wanted to show you guys. Because sometimes, you know, if you don't know, you're gonna make that mistake, the same mistake I made before. All right, guys, it's done. I just got one more to do here, but pretty much wrapping it up. I'm gonna show you guys how, it, how it's done. The one on the right next to the coil, all the way to the right, is the one that's a little bit more of a pain in the ass because this actual plate is tapered because this coil is right here. This is a little easier. I will start with the bottom first and then I put it on and then do the last one on the top. But again, you're gonna have to play with it a little bit. It's just the nature of the work. So when you get this done, then you're able to put the cover back on the plate, the cover, and then we're gonna clean the flue pipe and we're gonna connect the flue pipe right back to the boiler and turn it on. All right, let's see how dirty she is. Wow. Yeah, she has to get brushed down and clean. All right, guys, we gotta clean her out. This is pretty easy. Just taking a brush right inside the flue pipe. You can see all the debris going down. You guys catch my drift, but it's pretty self-explanatory. But look all that stuff that's coming off, all the flakes in the air. This is what I mean. Guys, put a mask on. I cannot infest or stress enough how important it is to put a mask on because you do not want this in your lungs. It's like the worst shit you can put in your lungs. But you guys get the point and you got to do it all the flue pipes. All right, mi gente. Last but not least, we officially wrapped it up. Now it's ready to turn it on. Let's see what happens. We'll turn it on. Woo! I like that sound. Purrs like a cat. The mind this filthy. <laughs> All right, let's open her up. Wow. Check that out. Nice clean flame. It's not smoky. No puff back. And that's exactly what we want. We want a nice clean fire. No, maybe a slightly smoky because something you can't get 100%, but clean fire, not smoky. And of course, a clean boiler. I would always recommend if you guys doing a cleaning, we already did a tune-up on this burner, so it's another video. But whenever you do a cleaning on the boiler, make sure you do a tune-up. Filter, strainer, and a nozzle. And make sure you adjust the air. 
and you'll be good to go. And again, I always recommend to leave it to the professionals, but if you feel you're mechanically inclined and you think you can do it, by all means do it. Try it. Check the videos out. Check the, um, I have multiple videos in my, uh, in my channel. So if you guys have any questions, you can always call me as well. 516-377-5200. Please, if you can hit the bell button, subscribe, and you have any comments, please comment down below and let me know. Anything, anything I can do better, anything um, I can definitely improve on. Listen, I'm here to hear you guys out, and I'm always here to do better as well and improve myself, improve my skills. But again, or you can always call it with the Baller Man, 516-377-5200. Weba.